Thanks for joining us again on FECAM's UNTH Histology Slide Series. I am Akela Busayo, a 6 level medical student of College of Medicine, UNTH. Today, we'll be going through the slides of mothers. This is from the academic board of FECAM's UNTH. Let's begin with the slide of the skeletal muscle. Now, this slide shows the transverse section of the skeletal muscle. The skeletal muscle is made up of muscle fibers, like what was known as the muscle cells. Now, these muscle cells are actually bonded by collagenous supporting tissues. And what we can see in our slide, we can see that there are structures that are stained pink and there are um, spaces that are stained, stained white. Now, these structures that are stained pink are the muscle fibers. Why the, uh, the spaces that are white, the white spaces that, uh, that are between these structures, are actually the collagenous supporting tissues. Now, the individual muscle fibers are grouped together into elongated bundles called fascicles. Now, what am I trying to say? Like, these fascicles can actually vary in size, and the size of these fascicles, I mean, reflects the function of the muscle concern. Now, as you can see from our slide, you can see that if we map out something like this, this is a fascicle as small as this, this is a fascicle. And then if you check this one, this is another fascicle. You can see that this fascicle tends to be bigger than this. So the fascicle can vary in size and not just one distinct size for every fascicle. But one thing you should notice is that these muscle fibers, are, they are grouped together into these fascicles. Now, in a fascicle, delicate supporting tissues called endomycium occupies the spaces between individual muscle fibers like let's take a fascicle for example let's say we are taking this fascicle this one here now in this fascicle this is a muscle fiber this is another muscle fiber now we can see that between these two muscle fiber there is a white space running here now this white space is actually what we call the endomycium so we can see that within these two, between these two, there's another space. Between these two, there's another space. Between these two, there's another space. So this is a fascicle. And then between the muscle fibers that makes up a fas the fascicle, there are endomycium now between them. So that you're able to say, okay, this is one muscle fiber, this is another muscle fiber. Now, each fascicle is surrounded by collagenous tissue called perimycium now you can see in this one now let's take this one again as um, our example now we can see that surrounding what we are able to distinguish one fascicle from another is that there is a thicker space that surrounds the fascicle this space so we can see that we can take that okay this is a fascicle we can boldly say this is another fascicle we can boldly say this is another fascicle because of this thing this space that is a bit wider than what we see that separates the muscle, fi the muscle fibers. This time, bounding this fascicle is called the perimycium. It's also a um, supporting collagenous tissue, but this time, much more bigger than what we see in the endomycium. Now, the whole muscle mass is actually invented, invested in a sheet called epimycium. It might not be very clear here. I think this one here. But it is, I mean, at the end, everything, the old muscle fiber is now invent, invested in a sheet called epimycium. Now, one thing you should notice is that each, each muscle fiber has multiple nuclei that is arranged at the periphery of the cells. Now, we can see in this cell, in this slide, we might not be able to see the nuclei very well. But if we take, take for example, let's take this one, let's take this muscle fiber if we are to see the nuclei of the nuclei the nuclei of this muscle fiber because there are more than one nuclei per muscle fiber so if you see the nuclei it will be in the periphery of the cell in the periphery of the cell here so you can see that if we look very well we can see that there is one dot here here and that represents the nuclei i mean one of the nucleus of this muscle fibers of this muscle fiber then you can see another one here so if it is in, in a much higher magnification if if we are to see the nucleus we are going to see it at the periphery 
of the cells. This is another slide showing the skeletal muscle also in the transverse section. Now in this slide, we will try to identify our fascicle that is surrounded by the perimysium. Uh, as you can see in this place, we can see that we can map out our fascicle because of the space. I mean the bigger space that is surrounding it. This is another fascicle. This is another one. This is another one. So with the ones that we are we able to map out here, we can see that they are not the same size. But we can distinctly map them out that this is a fascicle, this is a fascicle. Because we can see inside them the muscle fibers and then the endomysium that separates the muscle fibers. So it is very, very distinct. Like we can map out a fascicle from another. Now, if we take in this slide, we can also trace out the epimysium that is separating a whole muscle mass from the other. So this one is epimysium separating this muscle mass from this muscle mass. This is another epimysium. So we can say, we can recall saying that the ones that separate, that separate muscle fiber is called endomysium. And the one that separates fascicles, bounding fascicles, I mean separating fascicles is called the perimysium. Why the one separating muscle mass is called the epimysium. Now this is another slide showing the skeletal muscle, but this time the longitudinal section. Here the cross striation that makes up the striated muscle can be identified. Now checking through the side of the slide, we can see that we can pinpoint some vertical from horizontal lines going in this direction that makes up the cross striation. So if you can see very well, we can see that there are some lines in this direction inside this muscle fiber. Now this might not be very clear because this is a low magnification, but at very much higher magnification, we'll be able to pinpoint what we are trying to say. Now, one thing to note is that the muscle fibers are actually arranged in parallel to um, in parallel orientation to each other, and then they are of variable length. Now, some of the some of these muscle fibers can extend throughout the length of the muscle of the muscle, while some can just be some centimeter in length. Now, if you see that, we can see that there are some spaces between these muscle fibers. Now, these spaces actually represent the endomysium. Because we said earlier that what separates one muscle fiber from another muscle fiber is actually the space. Like, there's a space, and the space is called endomysium. So, this is a support, collagenous supporting tissue that separates one muscle fiber from another muscle fiber. Now, so, if... Anytime we see parallel straight thick fibers with some spaces between them, one thing that should come to our mind is its skeletal muscle. And this is also another slide of the skeletal muscle in its longitudinal section. Now, in this slide, we can see the muscle fibers in variable lengths. One thing to note is actually that they are parallel to each other, as you can see here, with no branching fibers. But we can see that this one is, I mean, this one can take, this one was able to extend throughout the whole slide. This one also. But you can see that this one just started here. And then this one is just starting here. So you can see that this is, there are variable lengths. You can see this one just stopping here and then this one starting here. So you can see that there are still spaces that represent our endomysium. And then even sometimes you can even represent our perimysium. So you can see these spaces. But we can see that our muscle fibers, there is no branching connection between it. this one going straight like this and then going just on its own. This one going also on its own. This one on its own. Even when the, it terminated, there was no continu uh, continuity. It just continued downwards. So this is characteristic of skeletal muscles. Parallel might be a variable length and then there are spaces between them that are even parallel to the muscle fibers itself. This is also another slide of the longitudinal section of the skeletal muscle. And this time we can see it is not very clear, but let's if we check here, we can see that there's a parallel muscle fiber going in this direction. This is another one, and then between them we have a space there. The space is also even parallel to the muscle fibers. We can see here this is a space, and then we can see our muscle fibers not really communicating with each other, even though this is not very clear, but we can be able to see that okay, fine. To an extent, I can see this is a this is a slide of the skeletal muscle. 
Now, what are the reasons for indications of the, the skeletal muscle? You know, reason for education, I mean, are mainly the characteristics of the tissue that you can identify on your slide. So, what are the characteristics of skeletal muscle that makes it okay? This is a skeletal muscle because one presence of fascicles, presence of endomysium, perimysium, or even um, epimysium, presence of the peripherally placed nuclei. So, even though you might not be able to see some of these characteristics, but so far you are sure that this is a characteristic of this slide, you are good to go to write it as the reason for identification. The next tissue we are going to talk about is the cardiac muscle. The cardiac muscle fibers are long cylindrical cells with one or at most two nuclei, which are centrally located within the cell. You can see this one, this is a nucleus. And then this is the cell. You can see that it is centrally located, unlike what we see in our skeletal muscle that it is peripherally located. Now, these muscle fibers they split or give out branches that join with similar branches from adjacent cells. So you can see this guy, this particular muscle fiber. When it gets here, it splits so that it can join with the branch coming from this one split so that you can join with this one you can see the, this one uh, we can identify by its nucleus here when it gets here it splits so that it can join this place it can join this place this one also splits so that it can join and join so we can see that one thing that characterizes the cardiac muscle is the fact that it has branching fibers that join each other between these muscle fibers are collagenous tissues this are the collagenous tissues these ones that um, appears white no, no pale stained pale stained these are the collagenous tissues and then they are rich in capillary network which you might not really um, be able to pinpoint in this slide but in the next slide they are much more prominent now between the end of the adjacent cardiac muscle cells are intercalated discs so we won't be able to see but it should be somewhere here because of this um, magnification, we won't be able to see it. But it will be somewhere here joining two muscle fibers or the branch, the branches of the muscle fibers. So it is an intercalated disc. Now, this cardiac muscle is also a striated muscle. So there should be cross striations. This time we'll be going in this direction, but we might not be able to pinpoint them. But I think we can see some little. Um, or a vertical lines this time going in this direction representing the cross striation because it's striated muscle in this also representing the cardiac muscle we can see the muscle fibers splitting and joining each other so we can see here this is a muscle fiber going like this but when it gets here it splits to join these ones if you see this one going like this then it splits so you can see the split so distinct and then the branch is so distinct that they are joining each other. Now, between these muscle fibers, you can see that there is a space here, but this time the space is occupied by some reddish particles. Now, these reddish particles represent blood cells because we said the spaces between them, even though it, they are co it's collagenous tissue, it is extremely rich in capillary network. So here, these capillary networks are actually, I mean, they are much more supplied by blood. So we can see these tiny reddish particles or substances we can see here represent the blood vessels in the, um, the blood in the blood vessels of this particular cardiac muscle. So this is also representing the cardiac muscle. And then, but this time here, yeah, the branching and splitting and joining of the adjacent fiber is very, very prominent. Like you can see here, yeah, this one joining, splitting, joining, splitting. And then you can also see the connective tissues that, that's, that are between the muscle fibers. So it's very, very prominent. You can see the branching. All of what we've seen in skeletal muscle that they are just going parallel to each other without communicating. But we can see the communication. Can see how this one splits to join see that zone going split to join this guy so that's just very very prominent about so the muscle fibers are the ones appearing pink while the connective tissues are the ones that we can see here appearing white this is also another slide of the cardiac muscle but this time a much lower 
Mandication and here, yeah, I mean the most prominent features you can see here is actually the branching characteristic of the muscle with the little spaces representing the connective tissue. So now, what are the reasons for identification for the cardiac muscle? Um, you can say that the first thing we should say is actually presence of the intercarotid discs. Even though we didn't see in any of the slide, but it is the most peculiar stuff about the cardiac muscle. Uh, we can also say that presence of the pen, uh, of centrally placed nucleus in the muscle fiber, or even presence of the branching interconnected cells. This is also a slide of the cardiac muscle. I'm trying to give you a lot of variants so that when we see it, we will be able to differentiate it from other muscles. So you can see this one going like this, then getting here split. This one going like this, getting here split into two. So we can see this one going like this, then split. So it is very, the splitting is very, very distinct for cardiac muscles. Now this is a slide of the smooth muscle. And here the muscle cells are spindle shaped and are mainly identified by their elongated or spindle shaped nuclei. So the nuclei like the, the nucleus kind of take up the shape of the cell. So if you cell, so cell is somewhere like this, and then the nucleus, this spindle shaped or elongated nuclei that we can see across our slide. Now this is because of the fact that the boundaries between two adjacent cells might not really be prominent. That's why its identification is mainly based on the shape of its nucleus. Now the cells are tightly packed and opposed to each other. That only little contribution, only two connective tissues can be seen between them, unlike what we can see in other type of muscles. So you can see that like this is these are two cells, and then it's they are so tightly packed and opposed to each other that only few parts we use see the connective tissues between them. Now this is also another slide of the smooth muscle, but this time at the lower magnification. Here we can map out the muscle cells by identifying the elongated spindle-shaped nuclei across our slide. Now the, new, the muscle fibers actually appear to be in groups and then with different groups orienting in different directions. So like this, this is a group of, of muscle cells and then they are going in this direction. This is another one going in this direction. This is another one going in this direction. So this is a bit characteristic of, of smooth muscle. You see them, they appear to be orienting, I mean, like in group, but this group going in different directions. This shows the transverse section of the smooth muscle. And here it seems to appear like the skeletal muscle, but in this, the fascicles cannot be distinctly outlined. Even though the muscle tend to appear in group, but we can't really distinctly outline the fascicle because we can't pinpoint this that this is a perimysium, this is endomysium, because the spaces that we can see between them are almost the same, unlike what we see in our skeletal muscle. So the space between this, I mean, this one is a space separating this a particular muscle fiber from this one, and then it doesn't look like the space is bigger than, is or smaller than what can what is separating the fascicle. So we can say that this is a fascicle because if you say this is a fascicle, you can also say this is a fascicle because the face, the, the spaces are even big. I mean, they are distinct, they are evenly almost the same in size. So this is one of the difference that we can pinpoint between a skeletal muscle and then this, this smooth muscle. Because we can see that we can't, like if we say we want to map out the fascicle, we end up saying, okay, this is a whole fast. In fact, we can't even, we don't know where to place our boundary. So this is what makes us differentiate that this is not a skeletal muscle. Now, these spaces, as I said earlier, are the connective tissues. So these spaces are the connective tissues. But this one even looks prominent than normal, than normal. But these are the connective tissues. So you can see here. This is also another slide of the smooth muscle. And here we can see the muscle groups in different direction. This one is one group going in this direction, another group in this direction, another group in this direction. And also we can see the connective tissues that are between the muscle fibers in each group. So we are going to stop here for today. Leave your questions and contributions in the comment section below. Like if this really helped. Subscribe to get notified about the next download. Thanks for watching.